Pete today about the president spending the bulk of his week fundraising. While there are clearly growing national security con concerns overseas uh, on a number of fronts. And the president tonight is at another fundraiser. We've got a series of Fox News polls that just came out, with one showing that 58 percent do not think this administration is competent or effective at managing its own federal government. And even liberal journalists were today questioning the president's recent decisions. This isn't politics. This is the optics of leadership. And the golf course is not the best place to be, even though you don't really see him out there. But the phone ra fundraising, those trips really uh, should are being questioned for a good reason. You know, the, the trips last Thursday when the Malaysian airliner was shot down, proceeding to Wilmington, then proceeding on to New York for two fundraisers. That's all being questioned by people. Joining me now, Chief White House Correspondent Ed Henry, who just filed this report. Megan, as trouble deepened in Ukraine today, it was full steam ahead on day two of President Obama's three-day fundraising tour of the West Coast. No more changes to the schedule beyond the fact that they had already canceled an appearance on Jimmy Kimmel Live that was supposed to happen tonight. White House aides pushed back on Republican criticism by saying, look, the president is always in close touch with his national security team, even when he's on the road. In fact, tonight aboard Air Force One, the president had a secure phone call with his Secretary of State, John Kerry, get an update on Kerry's efforts to bring a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas, try to calm that situation uh, down so far uh, to no avail. Rudy Giuliani, the former New York City mayor today, though, said it's time for the president to cut out the fundraising and get back focused on governing. The president should be in charge and he should be, he, he should be in charge in substance and in appearance. And flying around to fundraisers does not look like a man whose total concentration is on this. More problematic for the president is that Democrats are now coming out, raising concerns about his standing. You'll remember yesterday, the very powerful Senator Dianne Feinstein said the president should increase his attention on some of these foreign policy crises. Today, it was the House Democratic whip, Steny Hoyer, who, when asked about the midterm election, said that there's no doubt that the fact that the president's popularity is not as high as Democrats would like. It's going to be a major factor in some of those key races uh, in November. And then there's that new Fox poll out tonight that you mentioned. Uh, one of the numbers really stands out. It says that disapproval of the president's handling of foreign policy has now reached 56 percent. If there's any silver lining, approval for his handling of foreign policy has inched up to 36 percent. Last month, it had reached a record low approval of just 32 percent. Megan? Wow. Well, those foreign policy numbers have likely been driven in part by recent events in Israel, our showdown with Russia. But tonight there is a new story breaking, and it concerns the rise of this horrifying terror group in Iraq, ISIS. And this report will not likely help the president's case. Mark Thiessen is a fellow at the American Enterprise Institute and a Washington Post columnist. He just wrote a column on this. Mark, uh, so now it's 36 percent of approve of Obama on foreign policy, just 29 percent approve of his handling in the Middle East. And you, you reported today on one thing that may be factoring in there. Tell us. Absolutely. Well, this morning on Capitol Hill, Congressman Ed Royce, the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, uh, he revealed that for a year, Iraqi officials had been requesting, begging, pleading with the Obama administration to carry out drone strikes against ISIS and that those rep repeated requests were all denied. So what that means is the Obama administration, one, was not caught by surprise. They As were they warned claimed. about this a long time ago. And two, they had a chance to stop ISIS when they were in staging areas in the Iraqi desert before they went into cities and took over these cities that were liberated with American blood. And declared an Islamic State. We could have stopped this before it happened. Not only do we have the authorization of the Iraqi government to go in and carry out drone strikes, but they were begging us to do it. And according to Congressman Royce, those requests were turned down. They were warning, according to Congressman Royce, they were warning the Iraqi officials were about this dangerous threat being posed by ISIS and where this was likely to go. This is August of 2013. It was January yes. of 2014 that ISIS took control of Fallujah and the president was asked about that by the New Yorker. And this is what he said. The analogy we use around here sometimes, and I think this is accurate, is, this a, is if a JV team puts on Lakers uniforms that doesn't make them Kobe Bryant. That he had been warned repeatedly. He, they captured Fallujah, and he was out there saying in January, half a year after the warnings came and they were ignored or overruled, it's JV. 
This is this is a huge story, and what it does is it puts responsibility for what's happening in Iraq squarely on the president's shoulders. He had a chance to stop this. The Iraqi government gave us the green light to carry out. One of the biggest obstacles to drone strikes is, will the government allow us to do it or not, the post-government? The Iraqis were begging us to do it. We had a chance to go in, and this is a president who, recall, that the Obama administration leaked that he personally draws up kill lists. For drone strikes. Mm -hmm. We're doing drone strikes in Pakistan. We're doing them in Yemen. We're doing them in East Africa. Why would we not do them in Iraq? I think the answer is, is because it would have been an admission of failure. It would mean that his withdrawal had led to the resurgence of terrorists, and he didn't want to admit that if he was carrying out drone strikes in, in Iraq. So he let the, let the threat muster. He reportedly bragged in another interview, quote, I'm pretty good at killing people. Uh, but declined to do so when this terror group that is beheading Iraqis by the hundreds uh, was on the rise. Mark, thanks for being here. Thanks, Megan. Wow. We also have a Kelly File follow up.